you are to see Benson Park today is for a few day again with this lovely French icon, the 2CV. But this is not just any 2CV, this is a beachcomber. Many people out there probably don't know what a beachcomber is, but it's a particular model that they did only in 1983. This one has been registered, well obviously it was registered, but it was registered in 1984. So it could be the newest beachcomber. We're not 100% sure. But, you know, we're going to see how it goes and going to give it a little bit of a review. Um, looking at it, you probably think, it's a lovely nick. In great condition. There's a reason for that, because it had a sympathetic restoration. So the body, that was redone because it was a lot of rust, yeah, rust repair. I'll get my words out in a second. But it had rust repair because there was many, many holes. Um, many, many holes for many, many things to get in and out of, including rain and leaves and just the general outside. But the bonnet, the doors, these vent panels, also, if we're walking around the back, the boot lid are all original. And, you know, the body did have a rear spring, but it's done in such a way that it doesn't look out of place. It looks brilliant, as far as I'm concerned. I love the design. I love the way that, with the suspension, that you can wind it up or wind it down, depending on how you feel. You can go full on race car or full on 2CV. Depends on how you feel. And if we're looking at it in a general perspective, most people out there, if you're not a car person, you're gonna look at it and go, well, what's that? But everybody out there that knows cars, and you know, I would say, 60% of the people out there realise what this is because it's a really iconic car. To the fact that along with a 2CV, you have a Mini, which is an iconic car. You have a Beetle, which is an iconic car, amongst others. And this is French's sort of answer to rural driving because you can, and you have probably seen it in many videos before. You can drive one of these in a field whilst holding a bag of eggs or a basket of eggs and it won't break. Well, none of them will fall over. And what we're going to do now is, you probably guessed, is we're now going to go for a drive. Great. So let's see what I think of this little girl. Let's see if on. It is a bit small in here. <laughs> so, uh, this could be interesting. But yeah, this is going to be my first recorded time, let's put it in reverse. First recorded time driving this, I've only driven it once before. Okay, so that was reverse. There we go, that's first. There we go. So visibility, there is some. A second. Okay, it's on the left hand side. I'm hoping that you can see out. We're currently in second gear at the moment. We go nice and slow around the block. Then we'll go further afield. And this is just going to, it's going to be a proper review of what I think of driving an iconic car. These two CVs are very iconic, like the Beetle being a very another iconic car, the Mini being another one, and uh, various others. Now the pedals are close together, which does make life interesting. Brakes are pretty much non existent, which is kind of fun. <laughs> There's an old car. In the second gear. Here we go. Right, so we're going left. I haven't got a huge amount of fuel. Come on, brakes. In the first again. Now these two CVs, they do have. Like the Renault 4, interesting 
way of changing gear. As it comes out the dashboard at you, at first it's down towards you, and then the rest is semi self explanatory until you get the fourth. Let's 
let's test out the turning circle, shall we? It's not fantastic. Back in a neutral, forward for reverse. Even though there's many, many windows, they're not huge. The mirrors are a bit small. And on that front. I think if one of these had power steering, it would be, um, <laughs> it'd be a very interesting drive. I'm telling you, the steering wheel, it would be like, whoa, is it connected? Because without power steering, it, it does. It feels pretty light, to be fair. But it's probably due to the the tiny um, tyres it's got. Right, handbrake comes out the dash as well, and it's holding. So yeah, a little bit of a drive there. Uh, I wouldn't suggest driving this for long distance for your ears. Can't really use it every day because it's going to hurt your ears and you, you're going to have a headache after a while. But the car itself, fantastic, really. Visibility is pretty good. I do feel like the uh, rear view mirror. Well, you might be wearing it as glasses, really. Um, my, my elbow is up against the door. My knee's up against the door. I feel like I'm tap dancing, really, when, I, when I'm on the pedals. Because they're so close together. But that makes it unique in the way of design. And it's fantastic. The Mini, I think, is, is very similar to its pedals. It just... There's a lot of things to like about the car. A heck of a lot, a lot of things to like. But there's, there are things that seem a bit, I don't know, with the way the, the, the modern world, um, you, you just definitely, you couldn't use one of these, unless you're a die-hard fan of classic cars, you couldn't use these for an everyday car. But that's my personal opinion of it. But, you know, what else is there to say, really? So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you around sort of the things you get in a 2CV. Now, obviously, this is a beach coma. So, it's, it's different to what most of the 2CVs um, you see out there. So, let's, uh, let's give you a little bit of a tour. It'll be a short tour. But a little bit of a tour of what it looks like inside the cabin. So, I'm just going to turn the engine off. So you can hear me a bit better. Right, so what you see in front of you. So you've got the little little gauge there for your speedo. And as you can see, it's done 97,535 miles. Um, it gives you a little bit of a diagram there of how to change gear, but it doesn't tell you how to do it. So a little bit of experience um, comes in hand there. Um, there's your gear lever, which comes out of the dash which is, to be fair, it's a nice distance away. Obviously, when if I put it in a first, so it's down and towards you, it's right here, which is nice and good. And then go back to neutral. Forward is second. Third. That's in fourth. So that's top. Back to neutral. I'll put it in third then, but back to neutral. And then it's down and forward. That's reverse. Put it back into neutral, which if I do that, which puts it into third gear. No, is it? No. Yeah, third gear. Little notch there. That shows you that it's in neutral. Put it back into the neutral there. Then there's your handbrake. That comes out of the dashboard as well. You know, an indicator stalk here, which it was a little bit clumsy, so you got to be careful with that. 
That is. Yeah. <laughs> I won't bend it. And then you've just got a little tiny little uh, knobs and switches here and there. And then down here at the bottom underneath that, that there's your choke. I believe that twists. I believe that's for your wipers. Let's turn the ignition on. There you go. <laughs> I was going the wrong way. So that's your ignition. Is let's turn. Oh no, it's your lights. So if you look ahead, it's your lights there. There's your wiper, there's a little knob there. And then they park back like that. I think that's off. Uh, what else do you get? Well, you don't get a standard a clock. So a clock has been fitted. But you do get a radio, a cassette radio, and there's a Panasonic. Big Kenwood speakers in each door. Um, your windows. They don't open conventionally. They do that. And then pop back into place. There's that rear view mirror. If you're sitting here, it's, it's just there. It's right in front of your face. But you don't have visors. But you can get visors to... To fit and then obviously there's your canvas roof all the way along this is what they class a four door so it's technically a saloon car because the boot is separate and you have a fixed rear window and if you look at me there's the window right next to my face <laughs> right next to me body your seat belt is basically your you're definitely in the seatbelt it is totally integral to you and if you look I am touching the other seat and you've got the seat, your seats back there which bench seat design which you can take out so if you go camping you take the rear seats out in fact you can take all the seats out but with the rear seats you can put them on the ground and you can sit there and have a camp you know good pair of seats it's just, it's, it's a lovely place to be. Lovely and basic. You know, I, I like it. It's great fun. Brilliant fun. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna show you the leg room, the space, uh, the availability, anything to do with the back. So I'm gonna get in the car, and show you what it's like. Now you see these little doors here, they're dinky. So this might be challenging because I do have long legs. That's all I mean. I'm having to straddle with each of the legs on the side of the chair, but I'm in. So, <laughs> so I'm in the car. I'm going to shut the door. And to be fair, back here, if you're on your own, you're fine. If you have someone next to you, they might as well be sitting on your lap. But it's part of it's the whole fun, part of it. But back here, visibility for a passenger is very good. Headroom is pretty good with the roof down. But if you have it rolled back, you'll have loads of headroom. In fact, you have the sky above you. Yeah, it's all right. Just make sure that you don't bash your head back there because there is a metal bar there and that will hurt a lot. I do feel snug, but knee room is good. Foot room is not bad, because it's got a flat floor. But if you don't like the passenger, you're gonna have to, because you're gonna have to uh, get used to being very cozy with them. But yeah, I approve. Now I'm going to show you the operation of getting out using the other door. I won't be getting out of that door, but I'll show you it anyway. 
So this one here is to lock and unlock. So it's in the unlock position when it's like that. And then this little lever down here, push forward, the door is open and it's nice and light. Little sort of strap there, nice and closed. So now I'm going to attempt to get out. So this could be interesting because I, as I've said before, got long legs, but there you go. Even a person like me can get out of the back of the 2CV. That wasn't supposed to run, but it did anyway. <laughs> now, if you like some people that don't like something, there is another option. You do have air conditioning. Turn this. You can remember it. You open that up, and it opens up the vent flap at the front. Old school, man. This is before aircon. See it opening? So yeah, that is old school air conditioning. You couldn't get any cleaner than that. And simply just turn the knob, close it back up. There we go. Who needs new technology, eh? Right, so now I'm gonna show you the, uh, the inside of the boot, which you'll be surprised, the space. Little lever there, you do that. So unlocked, lift her up, and look how much space there is in this boot. Which isn't too bad, you know, there is a bit of a lip there. But you're not going to worry about that, you're not going to really be carrying too much heavy things back here. But yeah, it's decent space, a little sort of uh, pole dipstick sort of boot holder to hold the boot up, and a long there is your hinge and uh, simply just doing that and like that and boot shut. If you don't think the boot entrance is big enough you could have a hatchback entrance which is a frame and you can have it for all of the two CVs and it would hinge up here and then this whole thing would open up and you have a much bigger en entry area to put your stuff. Obviously the boot won't change size but you do have that option in case, you know, you want to put more stuff in. So here is the beast of an engine, the little 602. To believe that it is the original engine. Little two cylinder and it's air cooled like a, like a Beetle in a, in a camper van. And it's lovely and loud. And it's just great, really. There's a little fan down there. Yeah, bare necessities, which is brilliant. And as you can see over here, that's where the gear stick comes out. So that's why it's in the, comes straight out of the dashboard. And then it has that little junction there, which then goes to the gearbox. Sitting in, I'm doing one latch, two latch. There we go. Okay, stepping back out. Closing that. Now you do have the option to do a half roof, so a sunroof. You do that. There you go. Okay. So you now you've got your open space there. You don't have the roof all the way back. Or and pop ring there, and then lifting that out like that, popping that back there like that, rolling it for a second, and then got this little clip to this side, and on the other side, so you just latch on, and then rolling back, keeping it as neat as possible. Try to keep it as big as possible. Roll all the way back. 
and then on this side a little clip which goes over the back there and the same on the other side and pops in there now if you look on this side there's the popper there and this holds your roof in place okay so now we're going to put it back together and pop her in there Now everything's a bit cold, so it's all a bit stiff. Rolling the roof back. Get myself hooked on the door handle. <laughs> Put it back there. Putting on the latch clips again. Lifting that up. Trying to get it so it sits in the off. Pop it in there. Put the popper back on. There we go. Turn the roof back down again, and then it's back in the car. Okay, well, put it there for a second. And then it's simply putting the latch. There. And the last there. There we go. Okay, so that is the roof in all its entirety. So, what is my verdict on this lovely gem of history? And the keen person out there would notice she has a name. This is Betty Blue, which theoretically that name has been on this car for 30 plus years because it was the same name that the previous owner had and obviously it was garaged for 18 years and he probably had it for numerous amounts of years as well so that is probably yeah 30 plus years that name's been on there anyway my verdicts on a french icon i think personally i want one because it's brilliant yes i am big long-legged gangly but i fit in there i can drive it just um passengers they can be comfortable ish and it's just it's just because it's air cooled two cylinders you can have the roof back the windows open oddly which is brilliant um go around corners at any speed you might not fall over but you're more than likely not going to fall over and it's just brilliant. And who doesn't like a car that you can wind down? It's got coilovers, man. On store coilovers. But it's got coilovers of sorts. And yeah. I personally think if you ever have the chance of getting a 2CV, do it. You must have one. Just to have the experience. Or even if you get the opportunity to drive one, do it. It's brilliant. Absolute brilliant fun. Obviously, you find a 2CV, it might not necessarily be a beachcomber or in European countries, a France 3, or a Trans Sam. Might not necessarily be that. But if you do find one, which you will have to do a bit of history, a bit of checking, to make sure it's a genuine one, because they've been copies, just do it. Just have your experience in the 2CV. And if you like what you see, please subscribe to hit that bell icon as well, to get your notifications. Hit the like button, because we love like buttons, and hit up any comments. Cheers, guys.